And then I gripped the obsidian dagger and drew the point of it from the abdomen to the sternum. Carefully removing the fifth bile sac from the beast, I cut it into four pieces, placing one each the north, south, east, and west. And that's how I wed the virgin princess to the spider monster of Antartus. Oh, you should have been there. She screamed until the ceremonial cocoon enclosed over her head. As a token of gratitude, the witch doctor cut off his shrunken left hand and bestowed his honorable curse on me. What's wrong there, doll parts? I see you haven't touched your piece of lettuce. Nah, uh, that's okay. So you're cursed, huh? Nah, uh, nothing to worry about. Just paying curses. I don't believe in such nonsense. I'm a man's man. I'm Dick Donamo, the fifth dimensional man. Oh, Quint, you and your words. Here, here. I'll show you the hand. <laughs> oh, Dick, stop! No, it's all yellow and shrunken. The fingers are stuck together. Hey, hey, hey. Check out over there! Ah, oh, Dick, stop pointing with it! It's smelly! Ah, uh, <laughs> gee, I have an itch on my cheek. <laughs> Does my hair no, look okay? <laughs> gee, I was not what my teeth this morning! Oh, I do go to the curry! Oh, waiter! Stop waving that around! Over here, please! Oops. Hey, uh, bring that dessert card over here so the lady can have a look. Ah, oh, here we have the desserts of the evening. Mmm, looks good. Let's go. Oh, quit. So, what do you say? Let's head back and give you a chance to walk that lettuce off. Sure, Dick, but what about your hand? He'll crawl back. He always comes crawling back. Oh, Dick. I didn't know her name, but this skating car hop was the sauciest thing on wheels since Madame Wheelie Von Saucy. I knew that if I played my cards right, I could make it to the front door. I had a lovely time tonight. My boarding house is right here. Mind if I walk you to your door? Well, alright. Quiet though, in case Miss Beasley catches us. She won't mind if we dance the tongue tango. I began to kiss her deeply, but suddenly my mouth was filled with a thousand jagged points of pain. If I didn't know any better, I'd just say Miss Watser face had just turned into a pile of diamonds. This just in from the future. Dick Dynamo was the premier test pilot for the USAF. On the mission in the new experimental AS-400 rocket, a malfunction occurred, thrusting him into a tear in the fabric of time and space. It was there that he acquired knowledge of the fifth dimensional arts. And now, with his computational briefcase possessing powers far beyond those of mere mortal briefcases, he is... Dynamo, the fifth dimensional man! Diamonds! All around me, diamonds! I found myself standing in a pile up to my ankles. I spit out the rest of the jagged jewels and dust them off my jacket. Hey! What are you doing? Who is that? It's past curfew! Uh, sorry, Miss Beasley. Get out of here, Mr. Dynamo! You and your fancy slacks! You just take your computations elsewhere! Uh, yes, Miss Beasley. It's a man! Oh my god, it's Dick Dynamo! Up, up here! Dick Dynamo. Get away from the it's window, you lustful oh tramps! Whoa, uh, whoa, ladies. Another pile of dirty diamonds to clean up. Step aside, Mac. No one calls me Mac. Who the hell do you think you are? Calm down, bud. Read it and weep. City sanitation. That's right, Mac. We're the city sanitation crew. Sorry, I didn't realize you were public servants. Be sorry elsewhere. Next time you feel like littering, why don't you leave useful stuff like nylons or aluminum to help out with the war effort? Thanks. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. Well, 
This date has taken a nosedive. I'd better head home for a nightcap and clear my head. Hi, Quint. Where are you heading tonight? Uh, hello, Officer O'Gill. Sorry, I have no time to chat. I must get home. All right. I'll just pat you on the back and send you on your way. Diamonds! Again! Hey, can you spare some beans? Well, well, I guess I have some spare. Here you are. Hey, watch it, man! Well, I was starting to form a theory, but I still had questions. Questions that only Miss Beasley, the headmistress of the boarding house, could answer. Hey! What are you doing back here? It's past 8.30! I'll ring the constable! Don't touch me, you brute! It was just as I thought. Everyone I touch dies a horrid death and shatters into diamonds. But why? Think, Dick, think. That's it. The curse! Briefcase, we need to go back to where this all began. And TARDIS! Initiating USB portation. Now porting to and TARDIS. Where's the witch, Doctor? He died! Bled to death after he cut his hand off! Oh! Well, can you help me? Kinda busy! This virgin ain't gonna sacrifice herself! Hold your space horses! Okay, what were you saying? This curse. The witch doctor gave me. It's affecting me somehow. Is there a way to remove it? Whoa, whoa, pal. Let a duke you as a master of curses. I'm sorry, pal. My field is virgin sacrifices. I can't help you, but uh, would you like a bite of virgin's heart? <laughs> we don't groan for taste. Hey, I tell you what, I have a friend over in the fourth dimension that could help you out, Dick Dynamo. Now pointing to the Ancient Orient General Store. Hello, Dick Dynamo. I sense you are coming. Unfortunately, the tea has been foretold. I cannot help you. But balance your chi-chi by drinking this a wee wee. Lele? I know, uh, yes. Oh! Wee wee! <laughs> you are! Oh, you get real sense of humor, fifth dimensional dynamo! <laughs> now porting to Mississippi 5. Listen up here, boy! Go down to the crossroads! Okay. Set yourself down under the hanging tree and wait for the witch now. All right. And when old one-eyed Nick appears, he'll place a silver coin on your tongue and give you one wish. Sounds simple enough. Thanks for the gumbo. I'll be seeing you. Mind your soul, boy! Now porting to a guy pan galaxy. Nothing's working! No! Tastes like crap! I am honored. Now porting to Motel Schmotel in Hollywood, California. Yes! I have just the thing for you! Wine cooler! Yes! It cures whatever ails my mother! Now porting to Lord Joshua King Mangum. You have come 
to the right 20th level, Druid, Sire, Quint. Welcome to my forest keep. Never mind my hellhound, Sirius. I shall now roll to identify your malady. Dice? Not just any dice, 20 sided die. Do not dare peer behind my shield as I roll your fate. Ye, it looketh as you suffer a wound from yonder owlbear. Owlbears? I thought they were extinct. I am sorry, noble sire, but I required a critical success to identify what ails you. But before you go, let us partake on elvish no-bake magical cookies. I am a level 14 cook. So it's finished. Let the feast commence! Teleporting to Tijuana. Ah, Senor Cinco. Estás enfermo. Lo siento, pero hay nada a ayudarte. Ay, ay, ay! No te gusta. Taquito? Now putting to the present dimension of dark matter. The visitor will step forward, Mr. Dynamo. You understand that beyond this point, we cannot guarantee your safety. Have you prepared yourself for the dark and creepy danger that lies before you on this day? Yes, but I'm afraid I have no other choice. I have come for the Wombat Placenta that can break any curse the universe holds. How exactly does this work? Ah, Placenta. Now what you want to do is walk down the corridor. Don't look into the door on the left. That's the room with all the sternums. Go down the dark hallway for 30 to 40 meters. Now, a meter is uh, five of my footsteps with my big working boots on. Not the ones that I wear at the house. Those are my house shoes. And they don't have heels on them. Anyways, those are blue, like that flame I'm getting ready to tell you about. 40 meters. There's a fork in the path. You go right or left. You need to turn to the right. Don't go to the left. Me and Richard turned to the left last summer and we went down the left and oh, there was a demon tree that jumped out. It seemed like it was just yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday. Hey, we just took a left, Richard. Well, that's correct. We didn't go right. What's that up there in the road? Looks like a tree with flesh instead of bark. That there's that dreaming tree, Richard. It looks like it's slowly crawling towards us. It's like its branches are arms and twigs are the fingers. It's reaching for me with its skin twigs like it's going to strangle me. Richard, it's grabbed you. It's grabbing you by the throat with its fleshy limb fingers. Oh my god! It's grabbing by the throat with its finger like limb sticks. Those limb stick fingers are so nasty. Oh, nasty, I tell you. I'm Richard, and the demon tree ate me. And I could not sleep for weeks. Weeks, I tell you. Four or five or six. So make sure you turn right. Left. No, don't turn left. You'll see a torch on the wall. If it's a torch with skulls under it, you've gone not far enough. You need to go to the torch with the blue flame, like my slippers. Remember that? Blue, like Richard's smile after the demon tree got him. Remember that? Are you listening? Are you are you absorbing this in your head? Uh, yeah, blue. Quit fiddling with that box you're holding. It's it's leaking paper on the floor. It's, it's bleak blooping that paper all over the place. You pay attention. People die here all the time. My cousin Richard. Yes, uh, you told me. Richard's my cousin. There was this demon tree. Did I tell you that? Or was I just thinking it? I remember it was it was just like yesterday. 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 Richard! You're dying! I'm Richard, and I can't breathe! I know! I know! You just told me! 
Okay, okay. Now once you get to the right passageway, it looks like a mitochondria. Walk on down 10 meters, then you'll see a room with blood on the floor and walls. Now that's the girls' restroom. Don't go in there. Go five more meters past the black ooze pumping heart, and you'll see an archway with a door made of stone. That is your destination. All right, all right. I'm sure I can find it. Take this silver stake and hammer for your protection, and this jumbo straw. You'll know what to do with that. The stone door opened after a mighty effort. Ahead was a large cavern bathed in red light. It smelled of death. Beneath my feet I could feel the bones crunching of the men who had gone before me. Beyond the torches, I could see it sitting in a tub at the center of the room, bathing itself in placenta of wombat. It opened its eyes and looked over at me with a silly gaze. Get forth, you wretched fool. If my placenta you seek to drink, this best you must answer a riddle for me. I don't have time for your poetry reading, you lazy beatnik momfringer. I have to get rid of this curse. The demon leapt out of the tub. It stood to its full eight-foot height. Its placenta-coated body glistened in the firelight. Silence! Answer my riddle or face my wrath. Across the prairie and down the lake, what sound does a moo cow make? Clever. Before I give you the answer, permit me to ask a riddle of my own. Who's about to have two black eyes, broken teeth, and a pregnant mother? You don't talk about my mother! Quack, quack. Enough of this science. It's time to take really drastic measures. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Dynamo. I'm Nurse Nadia. The doctor will see you now. Please follow me. So, does that mean you're naughtier than most nurses? <laughs> Please step on the scale. Hmm, 347 pounds, my god! Oh, Mr. Dynamo, you may lay your briefcase on the table. Sure thing, Nurse Nadia. Oh my! <laughs> Okay, you are about 185 pounds. What a handsome weight you have there. Why, you don't weigh too much yourself. Maybe I'll pick you up this afternoon. <laughs> oh, right this way to the examination room. Lead the way, pussycat. Wait here and the doctor will be with you shortly. Huh, what are these things? Hmm, oh, I guess you could take this and... Do this and hmm. Oh, that don't taste very good. What kind of doctor is this? Hi, Mr. Dynamo. I tried looking up your files, but they're all classified. Are you really the Quint? Yes, Doctor. I'm the fifth dimensional man. Well, what can I do for you today? Doctor, I don't know how to say this, but I'm cursed. Modern medicine has no place for curses. Let's see what's really wrong. Let's start with taking your heart rate. Could you please remove your shirt? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, um, uh, let me see. Oh my, that's quite an intimidating amount of hair you have there. Let me see if I can get this stethoscope nestled in to get a reading. Hmm, uh... Hmm. Well, your heart seems to be a well-oiled machine. What about your diet? What have you been eating recently? Hmm. Um, virgin heart, wee wee, jambalaya, taquitos, a wine cooler, wombat placentas, a few tongue depressors, cotton balls, and, um, elvish no-bake cookies. Elvish no-bake cookies? What level was the cook? Level 14, I think. My god, level 14? 
To make elvish no-bake cookies, you have to be at least a level 16. We're going to have to take some x-rays and see what damage has been done. If you would please change into this paper gown, I'm going to prep the equipment. How does this thing go? When I wear it this way, my buttocks are exposed. And this way has a pleasant breeze. Hmm, it looks like it's a vote for pleasant breeze, please. Is that an objection to the pleasant breeze stomach? Well, it looks like I'm going to need to make a few deposits in the lavatory before the doctor returns. Let's see if I can find my way to relief. Gases burst from beneath me like a revved up 1955 Chevroid. Ah! Brown logs of relief! Whoa, whoa, wait, here's a little soggy moss. Ah, ah, I have rejected you, you evil brown krauts. More? Ah, it was like a small war going on below me. The putrid nerve gas of the chemical war was altering my consciousness. Here comes the mighty ape. My cheeks continued to flex off the enemy front as I blew torpedoes from my man well. I quickly did a courtesy flush to clear the battleground for the next wave of attack. I fought off my onslaught of dizziness to maintain my concentration. Then, with a white knuckle iron grip, I squeezed the side of that porcelain pony like a cowboy breaking in a wild steed. Just as I thought I had beaten them back, I heard something in the hall. I had to focus to hold off the troops. Oh my, false alarm. I had to return. Return to the war. The battle ensuing below. The paratroopers that were separated from the other men were beating on the cargo door to join their comrades in the murky waters below. I didn't think twice to up the budget on the war. I was down to two squares and still had World War III awaiting. I knew I had a few wombats to go. Maybe I can load them up with some nukes and send them on the way. Go, Brown Baron, go! Oh, oh! Who's that? Master, come to me, oh gleaming one. Oh, please, come in. The doctor. I squeezed my knees together and cautiously lifted my head above the door. The bathroom mirror had turned into a glowing portal. An undefined face started to form, and I heard a voice coming from it. This had better be good, Doctor. You have interrupted my bath, where I was bathing. But Diamond Door, the fifth one, he's here. What? Has he uncovered any part of Operation Frame Dick Dynamo? I don't think so. He believes he's cursed. Excellent. Bring us Dick. And Doctor, your diamond shipments have been lacking as of late. We must finish our third dimensional laser. I was under the impression the laser had been completed. Fool! It has yet to be completely diamond encrusted. It's worthless! That's right, Diamond Door. It's not fabulous enough yet. Yes, Stefan, I'm explaining that. Who's that, Diamond Door? That is my chief advisor, Stefan. Doctor, have you forgotten that we are the diamond encrusted lizardmen? We must encrust everything in diamonds. Are you trying to diefy me? <laughs> I know he just didn't. No, no, Master. I, I'll i speed up production immediately, and Dick will be all yours. See that this is so, and you'll surely have earned your war bonds. Dick Dynamo is the only man who can stop us. As soon as we get him out of the way, we will be free to conquer the fifth dimension. Therefore, the plan to frame him must be executed flawlessly. Like diamonds. Flawless like you, Dandor. Diamond. Doctor, I must return now to my diamond bath. Stefan, could you please reheat these diamonds? Sure thing. And why don't you grab the diamond leash and take our diamond encrusted dog for a walk? Poor Francois hasn't been out all morning. Diamond Door, are you still there? Yes, we will return in 3.28 minutes, and you had better have the quint by then. You're dismissed. Yeah, and you better do what he says. Doctor! So it was you the entire time. Your gown is on backwards, Mr. Dynamo. Your morals are backwards. 
How much of war bonds did they promise you? How much does it take to sell out me and the rest of the human race to those bedazzled barbarians? That's enough from you. I want to know how much their lives were worth. All those people who were turned to diamonds. What would you have to say to the sobbing daughters of Miss Beasley? No. No! Or the polio-ridden widow O'Gill and her seven rabid, crippled, crab-handed children? No! They can't even pick pockets to help feed beans to Hobo Joe's orphaned, two-legged dog, Odie. Stop! Stop it! <sighs> Don't make me use this. That's awful big of you, Doctor. Hiding behind a gun. The plan was perfect. I had my henchmen follow you around dressed as city sanitation workers. They would use a carbon pressure heat ray gun to turn anyone you touch into diamonds. The diamonds would then be collected and sent to Diamond Door in the sixth dimension. All the while, causing the public to distrust the only one who could save them. And now, Dick Dynamo, you can't even save yourself. Save me from what? Your hand is shaking so badly. You couldn't pull that trigger if you wanted to. Come on, Doctor. I dare you. Back up, you! Uh, I'll drill you! Here, let me see that. Look, you haven't even taken off the safety. There's no bullets in the chamber. There you go. Here's your gun, big man. Take it. You're giving me back the gun? You're insane! Take it! We're going to see this thing through. I, I don't want it! You win! Open your hand, or I'll force it open. Good. Now wrap your finger around the trigger and point it at my face. I said point it at my face! No! I... I, I don't, don't... What's wrong, Doctor? You can't look the man you're about to murder in the eye? And I thought you were a killer. Here, let me put this burlap sack over my head. I don't like it! I don't wanna! Yes, Doctor! This way you'll have to see my eyes and teeth splatter all across that white sterile stall. I know you're tight, Doctor. You can't bear to look at your handiwork. Pull the trigger! No. You want me to make it easier? I'll turn around! I'll even get down on my knees. Do it! Do it! Pull the trigger! Shoot! Shoot! Kill me! Kill me! Death! Murder! Kill me! Kill me! Kill me! Kill me! Shoot! 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 Murder! 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 Death! 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 Doctor, what is your progress? Ah! Excellent! You have the quint! Kill him! Kill me! Kill him! Kill me! Kill him! Kill me! Kill him! Kill me! Kill him! Shoot! 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 Murder! Death! Murder! Death! Gray my brains across the wall! Paint a mural with this brain goo! You are the artist! The paintbrush is in your hand! Kill! 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 <laughs> well, Diamond Door, looks like the cornerstone of your plan now lies broken and weeping on the floor. Curses, Dick Dynamo! You do not know whom you meddle with. We are the Diamond Encrusted Lizardmen. We have conquered many dimensions, and now you are the only obstacle standing in the way of our glimmering conquest of the fifth dimension. How can you stand before the superior race who squashed the mattress men of the tenth dimension? Blew away the dandelion people from the ninth. Defeated the kind-hearted fuzzy bunny men of the eighth. Trampled the friendly moss people of the seventh. And torched the marshmallow men from the sixth. I don't know what kind of people they were, but you're not getting your filthy diamond-encrusted claws on my dimension. What, what, what are you doing with that briefcase? No! What happened? I heard a crash, Doctor. Are you alright? Nurse Nadia, go call Detective O'Malley at the 11th Precinct. He'll be interested to know where all those missing persons went. Oh, right away, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'll set things right. I'll run Miss Beasley's all-woman boarding house. I'll marry the widow O'Gill and treat her crab-handed children as my own. 
I'll feed Hody only the best of beans. I'm sorry, please. Please spare me. Goodbye, doctor. Looks like you didn't earn your PhD in manhood. So, that was it for the case of the five carat curse. After that ordeal, I felt I needed a long vacation. So I locked myself inside the office, disconnected the phone, and snuggled up with a box of Alpha Centauri wine. When suddenly there came a knocking at my door. Oh, it's you. It's about time you came crawling back. And where the hell have you been? Look, your palm's all filthy and your fingernails are all chipped. Get back to your glove. No, don't give me that finger. Go, now. Where were you earlier when I could have used a hand? Dick Dynamo is created and produced in sunny Rogers, Arkansas. All the important stuff is done by John Baker, Anthony Myers, J.C. Dolphin, Dave Daniels, Grant Cottrell, and Eldon Calger. Guest starring this episode is Rob Paris and Ginger Jones. And be sure to check out DickDynamo.com and MySpace for more action. Hey kids, this is Dick Dynamo. Don't forget to tune in to our good friends at the Dakota Ring Theater and Sonic Society for more good, wholesome North American fun.